think it's hard to make a living from your passion, but I've done okay. <laughs> if you're dedicated and determined, the setbacks become part of the journey to succeed, I believe. I have strong and passionate views about life and photography is my way of communicating them. I was born in 1960 in a small former mining village in the South Wales Valleys. Really, my interest in photography began while studying A-levels. This led to a job as an apprentice industrial photographer for a large British company called Lucas. My passion for photography, however, pointed in the direction of the documentary genre. I think my first experience of taking documentary pictures was when I was um, photographing a forest fire in my home village. My father came in the front room at our house in the valleys and he said the forest was on fire. And funnily enough, at the time I was looking at a, a, a book, a Cartier Bresson book, and I rushed to get some film from the fridge and uh, rushed to get my camera. And I ran up the mountain, which was quite steep, and it was, <laughs> it was a really hot summer's day and took some photographs of the firemen damp dampening the fire. But um, the one that really struck me was when one of the firemen took a break and he took a swig of water from the bottle. And I subsequently had it published. I sent it off to some magazines and they published it, which was really exciting for me. I was really chuffed. I've got negative files and negatives from around about 1982. Um, when I photographed the coal mines when they were open and all the way through the miners strike, all the way through the 90s when the pits were closing and all different, all different subjects I photographed. It's, it's quite funny actually because I, I've, I've looked through negatives uh, from now, you know, now and again and there's instances where I can't even remember photographing and, and the place that I took the photographs. The majority I can, and I'm pretty good at the filing system. They're all numbered and dated, but not necessarily the location. Unlike a friend of mine who keeps his nags in shoe boxes, so I'm not that bad. But um, yeah, some 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 are very memorable. So you you remember the day and you remember the experience that you had during that that shoot. Um, others are totally you become totally oblivious to and you just totally forget uh, wh when you, where and when you took those pictures. I remember the 1980s as being a very busy time for me. After the Falklands War in, I believe, 1982, there was a victory parade in London. So I went to, to take photographs and sometimes the lovely thing about photographing people is that the unexpected happens. And I was photographing the crowds, very patriotic with their Union Jacks. And I could see a really nice composition in this picture with people standing, the lady in the foreground waving a Union Jack. And all of a sudden, one of the lads uh, towards the back of the picture decided to drop his trousers, which uh, really made the, uh, the picture stronger again. And um, the balance of the picture, where the people were situated and so on, worked really well. I enjoy being with people and I enjoy speaking to people, um, not just purely to, to take photographs of them, but I like speaking, I like to interview them and learn about their lives, what they've done and their experiences. I'm fascinated by people and their experiences, you know, from all walks of life. So that really um, links in well with, with documentary photography. Yeah, that's 
One of my favourite subjects, if not the favourite subject, is industry. And I enjoy photographing going into industry, but unfortunately no. The industry that was back in the 1980s, like for example the heavy industry of coal and steel and so on, has pretty much gone now, so industry has changed. But I still enjoy photographing the people that were, were in those industries and um, the, the, the marks on the landscape, the scars on the landscape that have been left by these industries.